As far as women go, women tend to get duped into Winstrol. Remember with women, I'm like, you know, I'm not obviously for women doing androgens, but if they're going to, then a little bit of Osterine or a little bit of Anivar is what I see most of the women who compete do. At least that message me that aren't willing to accept the masculization side effects. Again, whatever you want to do with your body is fine. <laughs> What is up everyone, it's Roos. I hope everyone is doing well. Today's ASMR sip is 1907. Check out 1907water.com. Coupon code Russo. Intelligent Elephant Carbon. Coupon code Russo, as well as Young LA. Coupon code Russo. All discounts in the pinned comment below. Welcome back to Peducation. Today, I'm gonna be going over Winstrol and my medical reference is the Anabolics 11th edition, as well as getting into what I know about Winstrol. I've never taken Winstrol. I don't really like to take the number one known hair loss compound, but I will go into the uses of Winstrol in bodybuilding performance enhancing cases. It's not really for athletics, but rather cosmetics and vanity. So the androgenic rating is 30 with the anabolic rating being 320. So very low androgenic, high anabolic. That does not discount the extreme hair loss and acne associated with Winstrol. So Winstrol, otherwise known as Stanozole, is a DHT derivative and is known to have hit the scene on the medical side of things around 1959 developed by Winthrop Pharmaceuticals. So Winstrol, like many of these other drugs, osteoporosis, muscle wasting diseases, some implications of helping dwarfism, inhibited growth. This was why Winstrol hit the market in Great Britain in the United States was for these ailments. Around the mid 1970s, you saw the FDA squeezing one straw out of the drug market into the underground, because remember, I don't know why the FDA or DEA does this. If there's a demand, there will always be a supply, but during the 1970s, it was labeled probably effective as new, better treatment methods were coming out. Thus, Winstrol entered the underground. Winstrol managed to hang on through the 1980s as a therapeutic agent, and around the 1990s, that's where the big war on steroids started happening, and you saw Stanozole Winstrol disappear. In 2003, Ovation Pharmaceuticals picked up the patent for Winstrol, and it remains in the market as far as legal compounding pharmacies go, but you know, it really took a blow during the 90s and was traded off multiple times with Ovation reviving it basically in 2003. So Winstrol is not only designed for human consumption, it's also a veterinarian drug. So there are veterinarian brand names of Winstrol as well as obviously human Winstrol, which would be the brand name Winstrol, but it crossed into the veterinarian market as well. So the underground is ripe with tons of different milligram counts as well as injectable Winstrol. As far as the dynamics of Winstrol, Winstrol has a weaker binding affinity to the androgen receptor than testosterone. So this is something to keep in mind. Normally I'm talking about SARMs or something where it has such a higher binding affinity than testosterone meaning your testosterone really doesn't count on the AR and causes more DHT and estrogen conversion. With Winstrol, it's the opposite, right? Meaning that the Winstrol is second place to the AR in the competition at the AR site to testosterone. Winstrol is known to really not fuck with the progesterone receptor as well as the glucocorticoid receptors. So there's no real chance of any prolactin based issues with this DHT, obviously. Another useful implication of the dynamics of Winstrol is its ability to cross sex hormone binding globulin similar to the Proviron video, which you can watch after this that I did. Meaning if you have a lot of testosterone in your body, bioidentical testosterone, SHBG will raise to combat it. Winstrol will plummet SHBG, leaving more of your testosterone free 
for you to feel, but overall a more toxic androgenic environment, as well as not as much transportation going on. Remember, SHBG is not completely evil, right? We need transportation to other parts of the body, but Winstraw is known to lower SHBG. Winstraw is a dry compound, meaning there's no estrogenic activity, and I've already talked about estrogenic activity, meaning aromatization, right? There's no estrogenic activity. There's no interaction with the progesterone issues. That leads you with a very dense dry sucked in vascular paper thin skin cosmetic look i've already talked about the hair loss but that's the main thing that keeps me personally away from rinstrol is the excessive hair loss i've had stories of people in my dm box at russo lifts follow me there that you know they're combing their hair and they're seeing tons of their hair coming out with the comb type hair loss so gotta know that the other issue is obviously androgenic acne can form even though like i said i read off the androgenic rating at the beginning that those don't always hold true depending on the side effects as far as women go women tend to get duped into winstrol remember with women i'm like you know i'm not obviously for women doing androgens but if they're going to then a little bit of osterine or a little bit of anovar is what i see most of the women who compete do at least i message me that aren't willing to accept the masculization side effects again whatever you want to do with your body is fine i'm saying that girls get duped into winstrol for the cosmetic look especially for their competitions and it causes viralization very quickly and one of the big issues with buying anovar on the underground is that anovar is a much more expensive raw than winstrol so the underground will make winstrol tablets be anovar because the cosmetic look is pretty similar thus women take this anovar that's actually winstrol and they ruin their voice in a week and that is not reversible as far as toxicity goes winstrol is a 17 alkylated methylation there is liver toxicity i don't think it's the most toxic out of the bunch of orals but you cannot run this weeks and weeks and weeks on end at abusive dosages expect to have liver damage expect to pull blood work and see that your ast and alt liver enzyme readings on your blood work are elevated and that you know this is a cosmetic hardener that is going to do some damage to the liver it needs that 17 alkylated methylation to get through the initial first pass of the liver to get into the bloodstream tired of abusing peds blindly for years want to get off Optimized by a licensed medical professional that's monitoring your blood work and biomarkers monthly. Want to be able to call in whenever you want to speak to a licensed medical professional that is well versed on hormones. Check out my TRT company in the description below. Elevate Alternative is the OG in the game over 20 years of experience. And it's more than just TRT, TRT plus all FDA compounding pharmacy items available. And overall, there is no money taken unless you sign up. You get a free initial consultation. And I have redone the website. The website is officially online into take form completely streamlined making it the easiest way to get started check out the pinned comment in the description below and we can obviously expect the traditional side effects such as increased rbc count we can expect the cholesterol skew so your ldl will go up bad cholesterol your hdl good cholesterol will go down you will have to come back cholesterol on cycle as well as recover it back to baseline when you cease the winstrol that is the big thing you do not want to have fucked up cholesterol for years and years and years that's how plaque builds up and that's how we run into cardiovascular issues 10 years down the line from not giving a fuck about your cholesterol as you're fucking around with these androgens obviously winstrol is going to suppress natural testosterone levels and really should be utilized on a base of exogenous testosterone anyways right so we don't want to run into not enough aromatization not enough estrogen that's always the issue with using something like this that doesn't convert to estrogen standalone is that you're suppressing your natural testosterone on top of adding in the androgen that's replacing your natural testosterone not really converting into estrogen leaving you with crashed estrogen which will lead towards fatigue libido issues as well as overall mood will plummet high estrogen not high estrogen but 50 to 80 on your estrogen reading is my sweet spot personally. And when I go below that, I feel like dog shit. I notice immediately. Again, I'm not a fan of these oral only cycles. 
and I would like to see a base of testosterone used because the half-life of Winstrol is only nine hours. Unless you want to try and keep that blood concentration stable, it'd be better to just have a baseline of testosterone under to catch you so you don't have periods of the day with super high androgens and periods of the day with low androgens that will fuck up your skin and everything even worse because of the fluctuations. All right, according to the Anabolics 11th edition, the therapeutic dosages for men were 15 to 25 mg per day or a 150 milligram injection every two to three weeks and then for performance benefits you can see anywhere from 50 every other day 50 a day 75 a day depending how crazy and how much hair you want to lose for women the therapeutic dosage is four milligrams a day and they have listed in here that for your for physique performances five to ten milligrams daily I don't know about that. It's a roll of the dice with the viralization. Some women will obviously get away with it for a longer period of time than others, but I wouldn't recommend Winstrow at all for a woman, but that's what they have in this book. What do I think about it? Winstrow fucks up your joints and tendons. You cannot lift heavy. You cannot power lift on it. It's a sheer cosmetic, dry, grainy look for you to go on the beach and be shredded as fuck. Um, it doesn't really rival the trend look on stage, although it is very close. And if you're looking to dry out for a physique competition, if you're looking to dry out for a classic physique or open bodybuilding show for a temporary look of dryness, then that's where Winstrel slots in. I don't see Winstrel really slotting in for long term. You know, this is my cruiser oral on top of my HRT. I don't see that. It causes way too much hair loss, in my opinion, and your joints and tendons feel like like shit you know it just you'll feel like you're gonna snap something in the gym obviously if you're training for pump work bodybuilding work and doing sarcoplasmic type training where you're just focused on blood volume training then you know you might not notice it and if you're preparing for a bodybuilding competition you're obviously not trying to break prs when you go in the gym but as far as athletics or powerlifting, i don't really see any viable means of doing this oral only cosmetics and vanity do i see this play a role um as far as what i know is the hair loss is extreme as well as the acne can be an issue with this compound and overall the dryness your bones become brittle and you start to fear snapping shit in the gym on high enough dosages of Winstraw. Winstraw has been around forever. It's a tried and true tested OG oral. So I can't really talk much shit on it other than if you do Winstraw, you're gonna look at your hair catcher and you're gonna see how many hair follicles are coming out. And you know you're trading hair for this vanity cosmetic look for this trophy and or to look good on the beach for a certain amount of time. This vanity look is not really maintainable and it's just used to peak a physique for a a certain date in my opinion that's where i slot in i've never taken it i have no plans of taking winstrel ever really it doesn't really interest me although i'm not really a shit talker component of it because i see why people gravitate towards it especially if you're already bald that makes more sense to me but got to keep that in mind women you're not safe with winstrel no matter what your coach tells you don't do it anovar or Austrian, my opinion, much safer alternatives. And always roid test your Anivar because it might pop up as Winstrol and you might save your voice. So this is one of the big things with Winstrol is that it's heavily used in other orals because it's so fucking cheap. And when you're trying to buy Anivar and you're paying Anivar prices and you're a women's physique or a women's figure, women's bikini competitor, and you spend all this money on VAR and you're taking Winstrol, you're not only losing your hair, you're ruining your voice. And this could all be prevented by Roy testing your gear each time to make sure you're getting real VAR and not Winstrol. I hope you guys learned something. Subscribe if you're new here. I will see you guys in my next video.